Hi, my name is Gary Cox, and I'm a senior technical consultant at Bluefish Development Group. Today, we're going to look at using Seamus Workbench to um, communicate with Alfresco and um, demonstrate some of the functionality of Seamus Workbench, um, both for quick queries to the repository when you need information and also for development work. You can see here I have an instance of Alfresco 4.2 uh, running, and that's going to be our repository that we're going to connect to. So I'm going to run through, basically, this is going to be a pretty short video, just going to run through how to get and where to find Seamus Workbench, um, how to use it to connect to an Alfresco repository, and then some of the basic features it provides and functionality that might be of interest to you. So the first thing, I guess, is, you know, what is Seamus? And that basically stands for Content Management Interoperability Services. And there are now several content management systems that um, provide this. Um, and support Seamus. And the nice thing about it is if there is a repository that supports Seamus, once you write code for one, you should be able to easily reuse it for other applications. And it makes it uh, much easier on you if you're trying to write third-party applications that need to talk back to a repository. And so Seamus Workbench itself is an application that speaks Seamus and can talk back to Alfresco, but it can also talk to other repositories that support the Seamus standard. There are also libraries out there for Java, Python, and .NET, um, even Objective-C, that provide uh, tools, basically an API, to talk back to a repository via Seamus. So this, this today we're demonstrating a standalone application, but um, I'm going to point out also where you can download um, the libraries for various languages if you want to uh, write code against that. So the first thing we'll do is um, see where to find Seamus Workbench, um, how to download it and run it, and then we'll go through a brief demonstration of what it can provide. Okay, so we uh, first thing we need to do is um, download Seamus Workbench, and then we're going to uh, launch it and run it in our environment. Um, I'm going to throw up real quick a couple of URLs that are useful to you. Uh, one is the Apache Chemistry site, which is where we're going to go uh, to find the Workbench tool. Um, the second is Alfresco's uh, general Seamus site. Um, not only does this provide more information about Seamus, but they also have a public uh, server that you can test against if you want to just try it out. Um, so I've put both the URLs up here. Uh, we'll actually go to these sites, but I want to put them up here for reference. Uh, if you pause the video, then you can actually grab the URL if needed and, uh, and then check it out. So first thing we're going to go to is actually the Alfresco Seamus site. And this has a fair amount of information about um, basically about Seamus and how to bind to it and, and information about Alfresco support for Seamus. Um, but they also provide a, a public Seamus test server, which is kind of nice. You can actually connect to it and try things out. The next thing we're going to do is go to the Apache Chemistry site. And this is where we're going to download uh, Open Seamus Workbench. And you can see the link for it right here. Um, the one thing I want to point out before we do that is you can see over here on the left, uh, there are downloads for Java, but there also are libraries for Python. Um, so if you're writing a, a Python application and need to talk back to a repository via Seamus, you can use a Seamus lib and in, in your code, um, and it makes your life easier for actually talking back to a Seamus repository. And, and there's libraries for PHP, .NET, and Objective-C as well. When you download Open Seamus, basically it's a zip file. Um, you'll need Java, um, a JDK on your environment, or JRE. Um, I'm running 1.6. The zip contains a, a .bat file if you're running on Windows, and it also has a .sh file uh, if you're running on Linux or uh, OS X. So I've already downloaded this, so the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and launch the application. Um, so let's, let's uh, launch this, and so now we've brought up the application, and you can see it's expecting a URL. Uh, for login. All right, I've actually uh, cut and pasted my URL in here for my server. Um, one thing I want to show you, there are actually a, a different URL depending on what version of Alfresco you're using. Um, so if I go over here, I'm going to just throw up the URLs real quick. So we're using the one on the bottom here that I've highlighted uh, for the Siemens version 1.1 and Alfresco 4.2. Uh, if you're on 4041, that's slightly different URL that you would use to access the um, to access Seamus. 
Um, so this is a 4.2 instance, so we're going to use the one on the bottom here. But if you're on 4.0, 4.1, use the Seamus Atom link. So let me go back to my um, workbench, and I'm going to go ahead and log in. Now, this is a development server. I'm using a admin login. And it's ready to go, and I log in. And you can basically see uh, the root of the repository, um, sites folder, data dictionary, all that good stuff on the left. And then information about each node, like I'm, this is, well, I'm on the company home node, this is some information about company home. If I drill down into sites, I can go into a site, I have a site called test and document library, a test folder, and then actually some documents. If I click on a document, you can see a variety of properties here. And um, click on properties, you can see uh, this is sort of what you would see in the node browser, right? If um, you're familiar with using that tool. Um, a lot of these are, are of type CMS, but um, there's also like CM title, CM description, CM author. And you can see all the property information here. Uh, so it can be really useful to browse this and um, just if you need to look at some properties on a particular node, um, We'll walk through this real quickly and see some of the things that are actually visible on each node uh, that can be useful to you. The first thing is um, basically object information. You can see some of the aspects that have been applied and the path in the repository where it lives. Um, we saw the properties. You can also see the ACL on the node. Uh, so this, this document um, is part of a site and it's pretty much the standard permissions that you would see on a site. Um, you know, when you've added a document to a site, this is the standard. This one has not been, um, and use the standard inheritance, it hasn't been, um, inheritance hasn't been turned off or any special permissions haven't been applied. So this is the standard permissions you would see on, um, on nodes in a site. Uh, this document only has one version, but there could be a version type or a version, a list of different versions. Um, and you can see a variety of actions that you're able to do on this node. You can do checkout, you can delete the object, you can update some properties, um, and so on. All right, so now we're going to um, tour some of the features of, of Workbench. Um, one of the first things is um, a console provides basically some demonstration groovy code for different functions. Um, there's a basic template that um, provides just information on what's required to, uh, to basically create a session. Um, then there's other more elaborate, um, like this demonstration template. Um, that basically provides you with a fair amount of starter code. There's also one uh, for doing a basic query against the repository um, in Groovy. So this is really useful. There's a whole bunch of these um, that provide this basic information of what you need to do to, to get started. Um, so those can be really helpful to you. And there's also um, the main, one of the other things we use a lot is the query tool. And you can see it looks uh, SQL-esque in its um, syntax. This is a basic uh, select star from CMS document, and that basically is, you know, starts walking the repository grabbing documents until it hits 100. So if I just run this against my development server, um, I'm going to get back 100 documents, and you can see all the information about those documents. So you can see this is really useful. One interesting thing about um, Alfresco 4.2 is um, now versus relying on Lucene for everything or Solar, um, some of these queries go directly against the database. Now there are limitations. Um, if you do ORs or things like that, it, it can't use the direct database. Um, but that's uh, something we're gonna show in a different talk is to talk about some of this where you can, how to set things up so you can try to go against the database. Um, this, that would resolve issues of eventual consistency uh, when you're using Solar, for example. So. Um, if you can write your queries in a certain way um, in your code, and you can actually avoid issues of eventual consistency with Solar because you're going directly against the database. Um, you may have use cases where it doesn't, doesn't matter either way, but it may be important. Now, 
one of the cool things with this uh, query interface is they provide you with a few example um, snippets that you can use basically to cut and paste um, you know as needed so um, there's a few different where clauses like timestamps and so forth um, I'm actually going to grab um, a query that I've written already um, that will hit our repository and come back with some information. So I'm going to grab that real quick and I'll cut and paste it in here. You can kind of see it as an example. Okay, so to uh, save some time, I've cut and pasted my query in here. Um, I'm going to walk through what it's doing. And um, one of the neat features, well, first off, we're just still doing a select star. So we're selecting all fields um, from CMS documents, which is just basically what you would know as CM document. But now I've added a where clause to constrain what comes back. Um, so we're going to constrain by creation date, and then you use the timestamp. Um, and I've actually put a timestamp in here. So anything newer than 12 20 2013 should come back. Um, also, Alfresco provides some extended features, um, one of which is contains. And you can actually constrain on a property value. So I'm actually looking for Seamus name um, where they starts with uh, test PDF. Now, I actually have a bunch of documents that start with this because I'm this is a test server and I put a lot of content in there, uh, lorem ipsum type text and stuff for testing. But I'm going to run this real quick, and um, you can see it's come back with 33 documents uh, very quickly, um, which is really nice. And um, each of these, I have basically all the properties on these nodes, but you can see basically everything you would uh, pretty much need um, on the documents. Now, let's say I wasn't interested in all of the fields and I only wanted one or two, you can actually, you know, like you would in SQL, you can constrain um, the query. So I'm just going to pull back the node refs now. So select node ref from CMS document. Still looking for a certain timestamp. Um, now if I hit query, now you see um, I'm just getting a list of the node refs back. So this is really helpful. If you're needing to do some validation of uh, CMS queries that you wanted to put into your um, code, this is a quick tool to be able to do some testing and see that um, what you've written is gets you what you expect to come back. Um, so it's really helpful. And even if you're not doing development work, if you just want to look at a repository and get information about um, different constraints, I think it can be a lot faster to write these seamless queries than it can be to use um, the Node browser and start writing like custom Lucene queries and things like that. So um, anyway, this is a pretty uh, quick tour of, of the tool, but it's definitely worth having. Um, it's definitely worth having around. I, I use it instead of the Node browser a lot now because it's very fast um, and it provides a lot of the same information, but it um, has a whole other layer of functionality that, that you don't get from the Node browser. And again, if you're writing, if you're developing against Seamus, if you're writing code, this is a very valuable tool um, to, to let you do testing. So thanks for joining us today. I hope this was helpful to you. Um, please check out our other videos. Thank you.